A Little Dutch Girl with singing stars Robert Simmons and Peggy Allen. Oh, we're Dutch girls, little Dutch girls, only when they care of Dutch girls. Oh, we're not taken in by the mark. Starting kids are not in love, but it's made of silver stars. In the ocean, deep as ocean, can control the soul's emotions. We please our life and love. If you come with me quietly, we can join the throng of courtiers, ministers, officers of the guard, ladies in waiting, and all the other folk in the throne room at the royal palace at Mirador in Sylvania. We don't usually find so many there, but today is a red letter day, the day of Princess Julia's wedding. Princess Julia. Thank you very much. I really don't know what to say. I'm so happy I should like to cry. But rise. And thank you again from the bottom of my heart. Your Highness, ladies and gentlemen, today Sylvania celebrates with loyalty and devotion the marriage of her gracious monarch, Princess Julia, with Prince Paul Brankovar, heir apparent of the Kingdom of Saragon. And now, ladies and gentlemen, you have my permission to retire. All but the Countess Eloise de Bussy. Yes, Ellie, you stay. Your Highness. Please, Eloise, do let's be our natural selves. Ellie, I know you understand if they can't something of how a girl feels on her wedding day. I should say so. Oh, Ellie, I'm so frightened. I wish it were all safely over. It will be very soon. Why worry? Doesn't he love you with a mad passion that mocks the power of words? And do you remember the poems he sent me? Remember them? I know most of them by heart. From early dawn till even fall, where'er I chance to be, I think of naught at all at all, but thee and thou and thee. Oh, don't worry. Your prince is everything a girl can want. I wonder if he will be. A man I've never seen. The man I'm to spend the rest of my life with. In my very land of fancy, where each maiden will romance there's a lover waiting somewhere to claim her as his very own. He shall gently woo and win her, like the spark of love within her, till her heart is
You receive him. Oh, but Ned, not a word. Oh, tell me later. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Ah, the princess. The prince? Oh, what a picture. How tall, how slim. What a chassis. Your highness. Your highness? I beg your highness' pardon. Your highness is mistaken. I am not your highness. Your highness is not your highness? No, your highness. Oh, that's funny. I'm not your highness either. My name's Pot, Captain Constantine Posh of the Petit de Dance, private secretary and equity Prince Paul. Oh, is that all? I am Countess Eloise de Gouche. Lady in waiting to the princess. Her Highness will be ready to receive Prince Paul almost at once. Uh, oh, oh, yes, yes, I, I'm sure I hope she won't hurry. There's plenty of time. In fact, there's any amount of time. What? In his last letter, he told her he was counting every moment to their meeting. And in one of his poems, I remember... Oh, what was it he wrote? How slow the hours go by, my sweet. When I am far from thee. Oh, had I but the turtle's feet, I'd skate across the sea. I'd soar to where thou set my own. And perch upon thy glove. And sing to thee, to thee alone. Of love and love and love. How strange. So you know the poems by heart, too. I know all my poems by heart. Your poems? Do you mean to tell me that all the poems my mistress has received have been your poems? Oh, it isn't my fault, exactly. But when one's bear leader to a prince who refuses to do his own dirty work, well, someone has to write his poem. And I tell you, it's tough sometimes, especially in the spring. In the spring, in the spring, when the year's at its prime, who would seek every week for a suitable rhyme. To express more or less what we feel, which is hard for a bard to reveal. And tis then that we men let our fountain pens loose, for you burst into burst on the slightest excuse. And the scheme for the theme that we sing is the dream, love a dream in the spring. Forever since the world began. And woman first was wooed by man. A poet's love to sing for glories of love in the spring. Now tell me, when is the prince coming? Uh, he isn't coming. He's gone fishing. Do you mean to say he prefers dads and flounders to beautiful women? Uh, foolish, isn't he? Oh, this insult. It will kill her. Oh, she must never know, never. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to tell her the truth. Does everybody else know this? Oh, about half her highness's ministers. They nearly broke off diplomatic arrangements. A uh, one fellow, Bombast, I think his name is. Bombast? Baron Bombast? He's Lord Chamberlain. What about him? But he's looking up the archives to see what he can do about it. Posh, promise me you won't tell the princess. I'll cry and cry and cry if you do. Oh, don't cry. I'll promise anything if you don't cry. You do? Yes, yes, if, if you stop. Oh, Posh. Oh, hello, Eve. You angel. Oh, I know I'm no good. Women can do anything they like with me. You wouldn't refuse me anything now, would you? How can I refuse? I'm only human. Then kiss me. Eh? Kiss me and seal the contact. There. Now you've pledged yourself to do anything in the world, I ask you to save my princess pain. I found the solution. Come in, everybody. The wedding is about to take place. A wedding? Without a bridegroom? Helen Bomber, it's impossible. Yes, I've found a way. I've saved the situation. <laughs>
Hail your highness. All happiness, princess, on this your wedding day. Oh, I can never hope to tell you all the thoughts your words inspire on this day when I go well that I shall have Equity to His Highness Prince Paul of Saragon. I am delighted, sir, to welcome you. Uh, please inform His Highness that I await him here. Uh, your Highness. Well, sir, am I at last to see the Prince or not? Or not? I'm afraid it's a case of or not, or not. What do you mean? The Prince is ill. The wedding must be postponed. No, it must take place. Oh, what do you mean? Just this. Listen. Court Manual, Chapter 4, Para 89, Royal Marriages. <clears throat> Should any unforeseen circumstances arise to prevent a royal bridegroom from being present at his own wedding, his place can be taken by an approved and suitable representative. And here is the approved representative. Oh, I can't do it! The marriage contract? Sign your name here. Constantine Posh. Proxy representing Prince Paul. Oh, I can't. I'll lose my job. What? Will you let her heart be broken? Oh, no. Yes. No, no. Yes. Signed. Do you want to kiss me again? Oh, yes, rather. Then do it or you shan't. Are you sure it's all right? Sign. Oh, Ellie. Do it. Oh, give me the pen. Oh, there. Oh, Lord, I've sold my prince. And he's sailing about the North Sea. Doesn't even know he's been married. You've still got me. Your Highness, all is prepared. It's Captain Potts. Your arm. <laughs> And so the curtain falls on Act One of The Little Dutch Girl. And so the marriage by proxy of Princess Julia of Sylvania and Prince Paul of Saragon was performed with due pomp and ceremony. A happy princess, an uncomfortable proxy, a complacent lady-in-waiting, and a self-satisfied Lord Chamberlain. My best wishes, madam. Very satisfactory. Very satisfactory. Tell me, Captain Posh. Tell me. I want to hear. Tell me about your prince. Uh, my prince. Oh, I can't bear to think he's so ill. Is he very ill? Uh, yes. And then I must go to him. Oh, no, no, Your Highness. Why not? Oh, Your Highness, I must tell you the truth. Don't do it. It's too late now. Your Highness, Prince Paul, he... He isn't ill at all. He... Silence. He's run away. Run away? From me? He refuses to be forced to marry. Forced? But... But he loves me. He told me so in every letter. Those letters are not his. <gasps> not his? Whose then? Mine. I wrote them at His Highness's command. What? Can this be true? Have you all been deceiving me? Lying to me? Pretending? Where is the Prince? He is in Holland at Fortune Dell. And at Fortune Dell we find Prince Paul basking by the Silver Sea. By the Silver Sea, behold me, basking, happy to be free, and no one else asking, leaving far behind me, those who seek to bind me to some sentimental young princess. All my life on her to dance attendance, frankly I prefer my independence. On that happy day, perchance I may say yes. When I meet with that sweet little maiden, she is no royal princess, she's no 
shall be. For with true love her heart must be laden, and her smile shall grow tender for me. I shall feel that I can't live without her, and no more shall I dwell all alone. With my arms close and folded about her, I shall make her forever my own. But I can't live without her, and no more shall I dwell all alone. With my arms closed and folded above her, I shall make her forever my own. But what the carefree Prince Paul doesn't know is that Princess Julia and Countess Eloise are also in Fortune Dell, determined to track him down, and are right now in the inn disguised as the newly arrived nieces of the innkeeper. Bomber, the Lord Chamberlain, is also there, pretending to be the handyman about the place. I say, my man. Yes, Your Highness. Where are the two nieces your master has visiting him? There's one of them, Your Highness, there. By the edge of a deep blue Here. You sing most beautifully. I've been told that before. The innkeeper's nieces, aren't you? Yes, sir, from Rotterdam. My name is Rosa. Do you mind if I tell you you're lovely? Oh, no, I don't mind. Why? Because I don't believe in men. <laughs> you're perfectly adorable. Tell me, are you single? I'm alone. I mean, are you in love with anyone? I was. You were? But he didn't love me. Well, he must have been an ass. He was. And you care for him? Not that. I'm delighted. Are you, sir? How long have you given him up? Given him up? I haven't given him up. He gave me up. Tonight would have been my bridal night. No. Yes. Well, that's extraordinary. It was to have been mine. No. Yes. Are you disappointed? Good heavens, no. Are you? No. The girl I should have married would have bored me to death. Would she? Don't say you don't believe in men just because a fool left you. Oh, he was such a fool. Was he? Yes. Oh, I'm so glad... Another will take his place. Another has. Don't say that. I want to take his place. Come here. How dare you, sir? You mustn't kiss me. Oh, leave me. You're angry. You. Oh, you. Of all men. You. Oh. Don't run away. Be a little darling and stay. What though I know you but slight. One little kiss is a thing you surely won't miss. Why should you fly by me, pray? Here in this land, I would have you please understand. We don't take love or things lightly. We treat our passion in serious fashion, as you may discover. Such girls, oh, be witty, where are such girls? For when the children in my love, my love is his heart in love, love is made of stern a star. Tis devotion, deep as ocean, that controls our soul's emotion. With his eye like the fire of the sun, the moon 
I'll see you later, my little Dutch girl. Yes, sir. Your Highness. Who do you think is here? Don't call me that, Ellie. Remember, I'm a serving girl, and I know who's here. It's Posh, and you've been talking with him. Did he do as you suggested? Yes, madam. He told Prince Paul that Princess Julia is ugly, fat, and bald, and that he's well rid of her. He needn't gone as far as that. However, it's all for the best. I'll teach that young man a lesson. He mustn't know we were married by proxy, and he mustn't know who I really am. Has he fallen in love with you? I think so. Oh, look out, he's coming back. Rosa! Rosa, I just heard there's to be dancing tonight. I know only the dancing of the taverns. That's where I go. Among my own. Among the sailors who understand me and who I understand. You shan't dance with these men. Do you hear? You shall only dance with me. You must be mine, dear mine, and now and forever and I'll lift your eyes and gaze. But Prince Paul didn't get away with it as easy as all that. For Princess Julia told him who she was and left him flat, returning to Sylvania. And so we find ourselves back in that court where Bomber, the Lord Chamberlain and Captain Posh are trying to sort things out. Do you know that Prince Paul is arriving any minute? What for? Oh, I suppose to tell the Princess himself that he won't marry her. That's what you think. He's married to her already, by proxy. I know, but he doesn't. You've got to get me out of this mess. You must tear up that proxy document. If you don't, I'll have to leave the country. I'll be done brown. And you'll have to leave too. The Prince will hate you. And if you do leave the country, where will you go? To a little island over the sea where things are better arranged than they are here, England. I'm sick of the worries of my land. I long for some desolate island. A place I can go to when things get too hot. I know the spot, england eh, what? A love so excessively cheap there And servants are easy to keep there Cooks often stay for a week, so they say While a charwoman only costs ten bob a day And a tweenies quite easily go Oh, tis a wonderful land Domestics are always on hand so that poor Mrs. Hunt has to try a new stunt and bananas she sells in the Strand. The ladies of fashion, they say there, wear skirts that grow higher each day there, while necks are cut lower to make things complete. Someday they'll meet. Oh, what a treat. The headdress that every man sighs for is one that they offered a prize for. Quite the most picturesque thing that I've struck, but I fancy that no one has yet had the pluck to be seen with it on in the street. Oh, tis a wonderful hat. It makes a nice nest for a cat. But the maker may say that it suits Danny Kate, so it must be a wonderful hat. Well, here's the marriage contract. You must do the same for me someday. Bomba, you're a gentleman. Don't mention it. All right, if that's the way you want it. Oh, good heavens, just in time. Here's the prince with Eloise. And the princess in the offing. Now the fun starts. Ah, oh, there you are, Posh. Uh, now, 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 don't be angry. Angry? I'm not angry. Posh, you've made me the happiest man in the world. Oh, I haven't yet. I'm just about to do it. Yesterday, I married you to Princess Julia. I know. The Countess Eloise has told me. And what I did yesterday, I undo now. See, I've torn the contract up. Prince Paul of Saragon, you are free. You idiot. Idiot? You double distilled idiot. I love her. I love Princess Julia. You what her? I worship her. You're sacked. Did someone mention my name? Julia. 
Julia, I've come to tell you how sorry I am for the pain I've caused you. It's all right, Your Highness. Porsche has just torn up the marriage contract. He's got the sack, but it's worth it. Baron Bomber, did you give Captain Porsche the contract to tear up? I did, Your Highness. Then your sack too. I wanted to tear it up. Julia, then you don't want me. You swore you'd never marry Princess Julia, didn't you? Yes, but... But you didn't swear you wouldn't marry a little Dutch girl. Oh, Rosa. Oh, we're Dutch girls, little Dutch girls. Oh, we were taking care of Dutch girls. Oh, we love taking care of Dutch girls. Oh, we're taking care of Dutch In Little Dutch Girl, you heard Mary Disney, Robert Peach, David Bruce, Frank Semple, and Elizabeth Wink. Singing stars were Robert Simmons and Peggy Allen. Orchestra and chorus conducted by Burton Williams. Your narrator was Morris Keller. Little Dutch Girl was produced by Alfred Potter and directed by Cedric Zahara. 